today we are going to start with a new module. The, this module involves the intermolecular potentials for spherical particles. So in the previous modules we have seen the equation of state, how it is derived okay, and then through the irreducible integrals. So today what we are going to see is how to determine these virial equations because these virial coefficients are important and these has to be determined from the interatomic potential. So we will be discussing in this module specifically what sort of interaction potential exists. So we have potentials with repulsion. So what is this? So it means if suppose we will be completing all this potential with repulsion then potential with attraction and the boil temperature. Whenever I talk about potential, I am talking about the interatomic potential that is the potential between two atoms, how they interact between each other. So repulsion means as you know repulsive forces are dominant, attraction means you have the attractive force to be dominant and then there is the boil temperature which we will cover, it is the point where both repulsive and attractive forces are balanced. So we will take one by one each of these models. So we have uh, in the previous lecture what we have done we have obtained expressions for equation of state, virial equation of state and then we have combined them in the form of a series expansion of the viral coefficients b1, b2, b3, b4 like that. But what we need now is we need values, what are those values of b1, b2, b3 and these values should also be a function of temperature. Because you know this attractive or repulsive forces are also a function of temperature. So we will consider a number of models to derive this particular potentials. And from this potential we will be trying to find out the virial coefficients, not the round about. So we cannot find the interatomic potential from virial coefficient, but virial coefficient from interatomic potential why because of the form of the expression which I will just now write down. So we start with the simplest that is the hard sphere potential. This is the first interatomic potential which we will be calculating which is the hard sphere potential and just to tell you what is that particular virial coefficient which we have already obtained in the previous lecture that is your B2. So B2 we know it is a function of temperature and it is given by so B2 function of temperature this is given you know this is half of the irreducible integral. So just to summarize what we did in the previous class. So half of beta 1. So this 1 and 2 should not combine because this 2 is for the virial coefficients and this 1 is for the integral. So beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 these are all notations for the cluster integrals. So it will determine the type of interaction between two atoms or 3 atoms likewise close shell interaction. So this is equal to minus half of beta 1 which is equal to we have seen what is that expression 2 pi upon 0 to infinity this is the expression and uh, you have 1 minus e to the power of minus u which is a function of interatomic distance by kt then r square dr, r square dr. So just to remind basically I just want to remind you that this is the expression which we are concerned and uh, all this part of the lecture is devoted in obtaining this B2. So the issue is if you look at this expression we are finding B2 when we define U. It is not the other way around that we have B2 can we get U? No because this B2 is obtained from experiments and then this experimental data sometimes it is fitted and form the UR but that is incorrect there will be some several discrepancy. So usually we find B2 and we define this UR. So sometimes what you do is uh, instead of directly calculating UR what you do you measure this virial coefficient you measure BT you measure BT and then fit the UR this is one of the way you do it. But you cannot calculate from B2T what is UR that is not possible because of the nature of the equation. So let us come back to what we started that is the hard sphere potential. In this potential because basically we are trying to do a form of expression which is UR that is what is the first part that is if I call this as the A this is the first interatomic potential the simplest one 
hard sphere potential where molecules obviously cannot overlap you cannot have this type of thing that two molecules are overlapping no that is not possible and it will also neglect the attractive forces between molecules so the molecules can come close to each other they can come close to each other but so when they come close to each other so your interatomic potential is defined if you use the hard sphere potential but when they go far apart you know when you, they go far apart there won't be any repulsive force in this case you will have repulsive force when they come in close contact with each other but when they are far apart usually it is seen they are attractive in nature so if i tell this repulsive to be very short range short range type of force repulsive forces while attractive is the long range so another thing which i want to mention is repulsive means obviously the two atoms will come close to each other it will keep on coming close to each other until their diameter is not exceeding the interatomic distance so their energy will be very high when they come close to each other when is that possible when is that possible it is highly possible in that time when temperature is high so if you have the temperature when you have very high then or it is greater than some particular value then they will come in close to each other while attractive usually comes when temperature is less than 0 or when this r is you know it is very this interatomic distance separation between two atoms is very very high and in this case r is very very less so the separation between two atoms is very less so this is you should take care that is we have two types of forces now we are talking about the repulsive forces and the attractive forces repulsive forces occurs when two atoms comes in close contact with each other so they repel each other so these are short range so these usually seen when the temperature is high and when these atoms move far apart then there is no repulsive force but only attractive force due to we call that induced dipole dipole interaction these are usually long range in nature so that is usually seen when temperature is not less than zero means i am writing here less than zero but it can be less than the standard temperature and obviously the interatomic distance is pretty large so based on these two there are lot of models have been developed so the model which we are discussing the hard sphere model based to the repulsive type of interaction so what is that expression let us write so the expression is you write like this so you are so i am expressing the interatomic potential in this manner it will be infinity when r is away by a certain value we call this as the molecular diameter sigma when the interatomic distance is less than the molecular diameter then the interatomic potential shoots up to infinity and it is zero when r is greater than sigma okay so it means when they are far apart there is no intermolecular potential between the two atoms so if i want to draw this graphically what do you have you have you draw one y axis and on an x axis so let us suppose the x axis represents the interatomic distance and y axis represent the interatomic potential so this u r if you mean that it will be a line simply a line passing through this point so it will be sigma because u r is always plus plus infinity i am stopping the line here so any of this so if you have the interatomic distance less than sigma you will be having potential as infinity if you have the sigma greater than this interatomic radius greater than sigma it will be zero that's what it equation actually clarifies so now uh, let us write down what is the expression so it means that if i can write like this i can also measure the b2 from this expression b2 if i substitute ur if i substitute ur so i have to then break this integral to make it two integrals so it will go from 0 to sigma 1 integral and then again sigma to infinity so it will be a sum total of two integrals so let us write that two integrals so it means if i want to write this b2t this b2t will be the sum of the first part is 2 pi into 0 to sigma 
So, this will be simply 1 into r square dr plus then you will have sigma to infinity then the remaining part that is so 2 pi will be there because 2 pi is the constant which is outside then uh, you will be having is what u r that is 0. So, it means you will have 1 minus 1 because if you insert u r equal to 0 in this part and u r is equal to infinity in this part this entire expression ok. So, when you put 1 minus this particular expression you look like this 1 minus e to the power of minus u r by k t. When you insert here the limits ok in this part it is 0 to sigma the value is infinity. So, when this is infinity this entire term goes to 0. So, you have only 1 here and when it is equal to 0 because after this part you have sigma to infinity that is when interatomic distance are pretty large your u r is 0. If you insert here u r equal to 0 you will be simply be having 1 is already there minus this will be 1, 1 minus 1 whole square. So, I am not written here but it should be named that this is 1 minus 0 whole square basically ok, 1 minus 0 whole square. So, this is 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 r square into d r sorry this one would be this square will be on this top ok. So, this is 1 minus 0 into r square dr 1 minus 1 into r square dr. So, if you equate this you will get simply 2 pi sigma cube by 3 ok. So, the value of the virial coefficient b 2 is simply equal to half the molecular volume it is actually half the molecular molecule because you consider the molecules as spheres. So, it is 4 pi r cube by 3. So, it is 2 pi r cube by 3 means it is half the molecular volume that is what we get. So, if you notice this virial coefficient the expression is independent of temperature which is actually not correct because as you know with temperature the interatomic potential also changes because you will have attractive or repulsive force dominating in which the temperature is existing whether it is lower temperature or higher temperature we will have different values of virial coefficient. So, let us see what are the key inferences from this expression. So, let me write again the expression for you to make it easier. So, we got this B 2 T is equal to just to make you the same expression again. So, you have 1 here coming R square dr then you have the next expression from sigma to then you have 1 minus 1 r square dr. So, this we got is equal to 2 pi into sigma cube by 3. So, this virial coefficient for this potential is always positive. So, if it is positive just recollect in the previous slide what I said if it is positive it means the two atoms are coming close to each other it means it is purely a repulsive potential. It indicates the potential energy is only positive no negative or attractive energy is there between the molecules. So, it does not consider any negative or attractive energy because the other part that is greater than sigma ok. So, if I want to draw this part so if you recollect this part and then you have this part. So, I just drew a line here. So, whatever this part here it is all 0. So, there is no negative or attractive energy. So, it is simply 0. So, it is not accounting for that if this is u r and this is r. So, that is what it is and obviously, this temperature independent which is not correct because this expression is not correct means it does not matches with experiments because you will have a negative value or positive value and it is also a function of temperature. So, one is it cannot give negative value it only have positive values and the numerical value of the second virial coefficient if you see is just the one half of the molecular volume of radius sigma. So, here the radius is sigma. So, if you take the volume of that radius sigma you get 4 by 3 pi r cube or pi sigma cube. So, half of that molecular volume is your cross virial coefficient that is B 2. So, let us summarize the disadvantages of hard sphere potential. Hard sphere potential why are we discussing with the simplest potential which I can discuss 
So, the interatomic potential is unaffected by the orientation of the atoms, it is a hard sphere, it is a sphere only. Okay. So, it means the real, but what are, why do we need an improvement on this model? Because the real molecules repel each other at short distances, since overlap cannot occur, because it says as it comes close to each other, then only UR is defined, but usually that is not the case. If you bring in two atoms close to each other, it will always try to repel. So, it means that at larger distances, this electrostatic forces such as dipole-dipole interaction or induced dipole-induced dipole interaction, they will be having attraction forces at large interatomic separation. So, it does not actually take into account these type of forces. And uh, it is also seen in most of the experiment, the second virial coefficient that is B2, this B2, it is negative at low temperature. Why is it negative at low temperature? Because at low temperature, the molecules tend to move far apart. So, distance is, this distance is R is pretty high, is pretty high. So, at that time, your B2 will be negative. So, will it give negative for our hard sphere potential? No, it will always give positive. And this virial coefficient is seen to be positive at higher temperature because kinetic energy is sufficiently high. It means when you put some temperature, these molecules will come in close to each other because you are providing energy from outside. So, it means that uh, this strong short stretch impulsion on that side when you are providing energy are important. So, these are the important uh, disadvantages with which the other models were tried. So, let us see if any further improvement is made. So, then some improvement was made because in the hard sphere potential what we have seen, it is discontinuous, it is a straight line. So, some of the previous researchers tried to make this potential to be continuous. So, we take up a new potential which is called the point centers of repulsion potential. Here it is purely repulsive, but the discontinuous nature of this hard sphere model is replaced with a smooth function of a interatomic separation. So, what is this? So, this expression is U R quantified as A by R to the power of N. Okay? And now, if you solve for B to T, you will get B to T equals to 2 pi 0 to infinity. Then you replace the expression minus A K T R n r to the power of n by r square dr. Just replace the value of u r with this expression. Then if you do the mathematics correctly, you will really get as a by k t by 3 by n. Then you have an error function, error function is of 1 minus 3 by n. So, this expression is only valid when n is greater or equal to 4. Otherwise, it will be b2 will be infinity. If n is less than 4, you see the entire expression will go to infinity. So, it is only valid when n is greater or equal to 4. So, in this case, what are the different inferences we draw? Here, we get an expression which is dependent on temperature. See, this is the temperature which is different from the hard sphere potential and it is positive. So, I should not say and it is positive, but only positive. So, because we have provided this particular expression when n is greater than 4, so the entire term will always be positive. But it is seen that it decreases in value with increasing temperature. So, this is unlike the behavior of the second virial coefficient. Okay. So, this uh, interatomic potential, if I want to draw, what is the shape of this interatomic potential? If I want to draw with the interatomic distances, so it will be something like this. So, this will be the nature of the interatomic potential. So, now let us go to the potential with attraction. So, we have seen potential with repulsion. We have seen the hard sphere potential and the point of centers repulsion. Now, the first one is the square well potential, which is the potential with attraction. So, in this case, the expression for the interatomic potential 
will have both a repulsive part and a attractive part. So that is the way the interactive potential is defined. So what is that expression? Right here u r u of r will be equal to so there will be now there will be three regions. It will be infinity when r is less than or equal to the molecular diameter. It will be minus epsilon when r is somewhere in between the molecular diameter and a parameter which is the cutoff radius for square wave potential into sigma and it will be 0 when r is greater or equal to the product of the parameter rsw into sigma okay so it means if i want to draw this particular potential so it will be something like this you have the interatomic potential as r here you have u r here so if i extend this line here if i put this expression because u r this is corresponding to minus epsilon let us put this minus epsilon here okay so it means i can draw a line which is passing through this passing the x axis and going till this then it goes like this and then again it meets the x axis okay so this will be your sigma and this particular distance will be your product of rsw into sigma so it means there are three regions one is between 0 to sigma where the particular potential is similar to that hard square it is infinity and when it is in between the sigma and rsw sigma then your potential will be minus epsilon which is shown here so it is minus epsilon and then again when this distance the interatomic distance increases further then you will have 0 here so you have three regions sigma minus epsilon and 0 so it means this then it takes care partly of the attractive forces okay this attractive forces is taken care from this side so at larger distances then it slowly converges to 0 so now about the mathematics you write then evaluate now b2t now this b2t will be a sum of three expressions okay because of the three regions 0 to sigma sigma to rsw sigma and then rsw sigma to infinity so three regions we will break the entire b2 expression in three different integrals and we will replace likewise the value so you will write down it will be 2 pi 0 to sigma now we have this 1 minus e to the power of minus u r so what is u r here e to the power of minus of infinity by k t because at this range 0 to sigma it is infinity so i am putting u r as infinity into r square dr this is the first expression then you will have sigma to rhw into sigma then again substitute all the values e to the power of now this minus minus cancels out it becomes e by kt into r square dr and then we have another term the remaining term which is going from sw dot sigma to infinity then you will be having 1 minus but this is 0 so e to the power of 0 by kt into r square into dr so three different regions three different integrals so obviously we will have a 2 pi everywhere because this is a constant okay so now what i'll do so this expression it is becoming 0 if this is 0 you will have only only 1 this is r square dr if you do the mathematics correctly it means it is r cube by 3 so r cube means you split r cube r with sigma it is 2 pi r cube so basically it is 2 pi sigma cube in this case by 3 first term then the second term you will be having this term you just equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus e k t into you will be having this term r cube of s w minus 1 into sigma cube second term if you do the integration correctly okay and then plus what is happening here is you will be having 
here so it's actually 1 minus 1 I'm not writing here 1 minus 1 because this is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 the entire term goes away so I'm not writing here it's 0 so what you have is simply this so b2t is equal to so you will have some term which is equivalent to that of the hard sphere potential 2 pi sigma cube by 3 and then an additional term which actually takes care of the attractive part that is e to the power of y r s w q minus 1 by sigma. So this is the expression. Again this expression is a function of temperature. Now as I told you, you know B2, so you cannot back calculate again, you cannot do that. So it means if you want to use this expression, you need the values of What are the parameters you need? You need sigma, you need epsilon, you also need this RSW, this is the cutoff radius or cutoff distance for square wave potential. These parameters are always obtained by fitting the experimental known B2 data with the nature of the interatomic potential. So you propose the interatomic potential such as those which has been proposed here, the square wave potential and then with that you try to regress the data and obtain sigma epsilon r w for a particular fluid. So it is like for a particular fluid you measure this virial coefficient, once you measure the virial coefficient then fit the parameters and get these values. Okay? So another way of writing this square well potential is the potential models which are having both attractive and repulsive potential. We can also make this dimensionless. What? How do you write it dimensionless? You write it this manner. B2, whatever the expression is, instead of temperature, you write T star. So T star is some sort of reduced temperature. So this will be, so I am reducing the entire expression in terms of the molecular, half the molecular diameter or with respect to the hard sphere potential what is the value of B2. So if I do this mathematics, so this I can write down as B star into T star, okay, the reduced real coefficients which is nothing but equal to 1 plus then 1 minus e to the power of 1 by T star into RSW whole Q. that is it, where T star I have written as equal to KT into epsilon. Okay. From the same expression I was reduced into a reduced property, reduced viral coefficient. So now you see this expression, it is still a function of temperature but a reduced temperature. So at low temperatures the exponential term, this term at low temperature this term will dominate. If this term dominates because this term is greater than 1, okay, because RHW cannot be less than 1, so you have it is greater than 1. So overall this term is will be the product of this and this will be greater than 1. So it means greater than minus 1 it will be because it is a negative in nature. So this entire term will be negative. So it means your virial coefficient is negative. So it means at those terms when it will be T is less temperature, the interatomic distance will be very large. So in that case your second virial coefficient is negative. But at high temperature if you see this expression, this entire expression will be positive. The product of these two terms is positive, this one and this one is positive. So this positive means your second virial coefficient is positive. What happens at high temperature basically? At high temperature, the kinetic energy of the molecules has larger magnitude than the depth of the potential well. So if you notice, you have a potential well here, okay. So as I note, this is the R, this is U R, then this. So this part, this minus E, when you supply that much energy, it never reaches to this part. So because of the energy, the kinetic energy, this overcomes this minus epsilon and everything is above UR. Okay. That is why in this case the attractive forces are unimportant when the temperature is fed from outside. So your kinetic energy is high, it overcomes the minus epsilon. And then what happens is then if you see if this is almost uh, you know this is 
the virial coefficient then is almost close to unity almost it will be close to unity so it means if it is unity it means it is just equal to that computed from the hard sphere potential or the rigid sphere model because if you see if you put this temperature higher and higher so this will be close to you know it will be this e to the power of close to 0 so e to the power of 0 is 1 so it is 1 minus 1 is 0 so entire terms goes away you are only left with 1 or it is b star and b star what is this b star is nothing but 2 pi sigma cube 3 so at high temperatures the expression for the virial coefficient actually converges to that of the rigid sphere model this two limitation you should understand okay so we have got the one of the attractive and repulsive regions together so now let us see if there are other models also an improvement on this because in these cases you need you see this this form of the potential is discontinuous you cannot do the derivative at some points so let us see if we have those particular potential which are not discontinuous and thus taking care of both repulsive and attractive part but before that let us discuss this boil temperature it is a very important concept as I told you boil temperature is that point where the attractive and repulsive forces becomes 0. So with increase in temperature this B2 goes from a negative to a positive quantity. So it is something like this B2. So if I want to draw it here with increase in temperature if I want to draw with respect to B2. So, if this is 0, okay. so this will somehow go like this. So, this is for a let us say a gas like helium I have drawn, I am not writing the absolute value. So, at high temperatures, so this is the temperature, at high temperature, this is uh, no, becoming positive in nature B2 it goes above 0 but at low temperature it is below 0 because at low temperature the long range attraction is important. So there must be some temperature that is this temperature where the B2 value is 0. So that is called the boil temperature that is called the boil temperature. So two inferences can be drawn from this point one is as you go higher and higher temperature the virial coefficient if you see is independent of temperature I will come to this discussion later and as you go to lower and lower temperature your interatomic distance separation increases and attractive forces become important okay. So we should find a temperature a particular unique point where you can separate both the attractive and the repulsive part. So that temperature is called boil temperature. If you do that particular expression correctly, you will arrive at this boil temperature expression. The boil temperature Tb is equal to epsilon by K into ln of R cube Sw indicates square wave potential R. So this is one of the parameters okay, by R cube sw by 1 so this is actually this factor so this is your boil temperature so temperature below the boil temperature attractive part of the potential so this is that attractive part of the potential and negative viral coefficient so obviously if this is true this is below 0 it will be negative in this case temperatures higher than boil temperature repulsive port but second virial coefficient is positive here the graph is something like this I could have made it just increasing with temperature and what no but because at higher temperature it is seen the virial coefficient are no longer function of temperature they becomes almost independent of temperature but greater than 0 so that is what it says it will be greater than 0 it is positive okay. So let us see what are these parameters for some certain uh, molecules so these are the certain molecules and in this uh, square well potential you have this has argon, benzene, CF4, CH4, methane, carbon dioxide, krypton, pentane, neopentane, nitrogen, xenon. So these all these data has been taken from the book. So in this case you have three parameters RHW, sigma. So these are all in uh, you know this is a factor, this is unitless, the sigma these are in Armstrong. Okay. So uh, if you see um, these are the parameters they have obtained 
by fitting the experimental virial coefficient with the potential expression. So, these terms you can use directly to obtain the B2 at any temperature. So, if you notice these terms, obviously these terms like if you have a bigger and bigger molecule, your molecular diameter also increases. For example, for neopentane, it is 5.422, where the case of a monoatoming gas argon, it is 3.06, or for benzene, it is 4.83. Okay, these are the things and also you see that the epsilon value is also given here. So, it means you have to supply higher and higher energy as you have a bigger and bigger molecules. So, as to have a positive virial coefficient. Okay. So, this was all about the molecules here. In most of these cases, all the molecules whether it is argon, benzene, CF4, CH4 with a very simplistic assumption, they are assumed to be spheres. Thereafter, they have obtained and regressed this parameter values. So, now some improvement is required which I told you because this interatomic potential that is what we have discussed just now the square wave potential is discontinuous. So, make is continuous this my and Leonard, Leonard Jones potential came about. So, what is the general form of my and Leonard Jones potential? So, this is given in terms of two expression. So, you are you are equal to d upon r n minus c upon r to the power of m. So, these my and Leonard's potential are in the form of like this. So, n and m are exponents. So, it will give a smooth and continuous function and evaluation of the virial coefficient of the potential thus it is not so simple it will require numerical integration because you have r in the denominator. In, this, in those cases r was in the numerator. So, what is m? This m, so m this is actually a small m is a parameter in the potential estimated from quantum mechanical dispersion energy and is equal to 6 for nonpolar molecules. This parameter can also be described due to the instantaneous coupled fluctuation of the distribution of the electrons around the each atom resulting in an induced dipole induced dipole net interaction. So, this we can also call it as the attractive forces. So, it means we have a function where you have attractive forces given by this second term and the repulsive forces given by the first term. For the mathematical convenience n here the n value is frequently chosen to be equal to 12 resulting in the commonly used what we know as the Leonard Jones potential for nonpolar molecules. So, you have one as the attractive potential I have plotted air and this is the repulsive potential. So, that is how the entire my and Leonard Jones set of potentials were formulated. So, Leonard Jones then said that ok if you make it convenient for numerical integration what they did was they put n value as 12, m value is 6. So, it means you have this 12 6 Leonard Jones potential. So, let us see what is the form of that expression. So, this form of the expression is u r if I write correctly here it is 4 epsilon these are very much familiar with this expression. So, it is sigma by r to the power of 12 minus sigma by r to the power of 6. So, this is called also called as 12 6 potential 12 6 L j potential. So, this is the attractive part and this is the repulsive part. So, this will give a smooth continuous curve. So, if I want to draw this curve here the interatomic potential. So, it will be something like this. Okay. So, let us say this is 0, this is 1, this is minus 1 and let us say these are those points, this is let us suppose this is 1, this is 1.5, 2 like that. So, this is the interatomic separation and this is the potential. Now, you see the curve is potential. So, it means this particular point is epsilon, this is this point and the place where it intersects the x axis, this is the sigma. Okay. 
so sigma here just becomes sigma is the value is the value of r of r where your interatomic potential is equal to 0 and this epsilon is the depth of the well ok this depth of the well so if you fit in u r equal to 0 in this expression you can find out this r is equal to nothing but the interatomic distance is equal to 2 to the power of 1 by 6 by sigma ok so you multiply the factor of 2 to the power of 1 by 6 into sigma so this is the interatomic potential which is widely used in computational calculations such as molecular dynamics monte carlo so you try to represent the non bonded interaction through this lj potential because ultimately what you do in these calculations you do a derivative of this potential with respect to distance so you have to have a particular function or the form of potential which is continuous in nature so this is the one expression which is the continuous and you can do the derivative at any point so then the second virial coefficient there is some mathematics involved you have to find out that so what is that the it will be given as b2 function of temperature this is equal to 2 pi 0 to infinity i am just ex providing the expression minus 4 epsilon by kt by sigma by r12 minus sigma by r6 Okay, then the first bracket and finally the last bracket into r square dr. So this is the expression for B2t. So this if I simplify it will become 2 pi sigma cube by 3 by 0 to infinity. Then you have 1 minus exponential minus 4 epsilon by kt. So what I do I will take an expression which is y what is y y i will take as r by sigma whole cube r by sigma whole cube if i take so this become y to the power of 4 minus 1 upon y to the power of square so i have taken express y as r by sigma whole cube okay so mm, now i can also reduce it reduce it to the dimensionless temperature or the reduced temperature t star i make some correction in this expression i likewise for square f potential i write like kt by epsilon so the second virial coefficient thus i can write as a function of the hard sphere potential as 2 pi by 3 into sigma q b star t star the reduced virial coefficient by 0 to infinity then it becomes 1 minus exponential minus 4 upon t star because kt by epsilon is t star by 1 by y4 by 1 by y square to dy so this is the expression for this as you can see you have to evaluate this integral which cannot be done analytically you have to do numerically so for this there is one code which is given in the sandler's book which i will discuss in the next lecture but to keep in mind this is the final expression you get it is not solvable by a normal method you have to do by numerically so let us see what are the key inferences from this so in this case it means when i write this expression this b2 to t star is equal to b2 by 2 pi upon 3 to sigma cube so it indicates that that the it same reduced temperature because we have written everything in terms of reduced temperature at the same reduced temperature all molecules represented by the lennard jones 12 6 potential shall have the same value of the reduced virial coefficient 
this is similar to like what the corresponding states theory you studied in classical thermodynamics so the corresponding state relation for the second relation that is this is relation that is the corresponding state relation of the second variable coefficient of a Lenard-Jones fluid this is termed in this manner so the reducing parameters for this correlation are not the critical properties but just to remind you in the case of classical thermodynamics the corresponding states relation was a function of tc pc okay but in this case this is not the function of tc pc but this is the function of the intermolecular potential parameters that is your sigma epsilon so this is you should keep in mind so now let us see how they compare well with both the expressions so this is all about the leonard jones potential these are the parameters for leonard jones parameter and these are the parameters i already discussed for the square wave potential looks similar but only you have an additional parameter in the case of square wave potential that is rsw otherwise in this case you have the sigma which is again a function of the interatomic distance armstrong this is also a function of armstrong so this values of the interatomic distance where the potential is equal to zero all is you can say they are almost close to each other but however this potential this epsilon value that is different so these are i want to make side by side both the comparison because this potential will be used further to represent both attractive and repulsive term so i would like to stop my lecture here so again you go through this we have started with the chapter number 8 of this sandler's book you go through this you will see the interatomic potential in detail thank you mm -hmm.